Hi everyone, my name is Igor Samokis. I'm working in Visma Labs as a technical quality assurance engineer and today I will speak about uh, interesting and not uh, yet usual topic uh, at IT conference called uh, learning how to learn and now I change a bit the title um, saying learning how to learn by riding a bike and you will see in a few moments why I did that. And I told that it will be a workshop I will try to make it a bit like a workshop, but we'll see how it will go. Um, a few years uh, ago, I found uh, one article and then read uh, some others one about how to increase uh, your competences in learning information, how to be a better learner, how to easily, uh, more easily learn new information, and. Um, when I did the research, I used a few learning techniques, particularly there is a sixth one uh, that, I want you, uh, that I want to share with you today. And uh, I found those techniques really very powerful and very helpful for me to be a better test engineer. I hope it will do the same work for you to become a better developer. And uh, also I didn't uh, only find it helpful for my uh, work, but also for professional life as well. Um, why I'm thinking that? Because I think all of you right now uh, can remember a situation when they uh, faced uh, a time when they really need to learn some new stuff, some new tools that arise, some new techniques, some new library, or even some new programming languages. And this basically means that we are under constant pressure of terabytes of new information we need to process and to learn just in order to step on top of our daily work. Here is a, a list of, uh, I will present a list of six learning techniques that I will go to speak today. First is Pomodoro timer, a simple time timer that help you avoid procrastination. The second one is focused and diffuse mode of thinking, which basically a technique when you switch between focusing uh, periods when you really focused on your work and periods of relaxation and how it can help you uh, with problem solving skill. And then space repetition for memorization of learned material. Uh, memory palace, uh, very powerful technique that we also will try to use uh, in practice for learning how to learn and it's basically using a very familiar physical location to hook learning concepts there. The fifth one is interleaving, basically it's a mix in a variety of studying of learning objects to boost uh, problem solving skill. Uh, and last but not least is meaningful association and I found it like as a uh, younger brother of memory palace and it is very straightforward, we just uh, take some, uh, something like door and associate it with exploratory testing because I think the doors opens possibility to explore the world basically making associations and uh, right now I'm showing here a bike and I want, um, well, I said about memory palace and that uh, this technique is about having very uh, Imagine very familiar physical location and hook learning concept there, but unfortunately it's hard for everyone here to imagine some very familiar place. So I taking a bicycle is a very familiar object for everyone. And the first association that we will create is uh, imagine uh, you have got a tire puncture, your tire has gotten flat. And imagine the situation, it's not really that pleasant situation. Yes? Most probably. So imagine tire contour on your bike and, so, and we will associate it with the first learning technique that we will learn today. But before I want to say a few words about procrastination. Um, when we have some unhappy feelings when we start to doing some task, any, any unpleasant task um, currently, uh, it means it uh, activates area in our brain that is associated with physical pain, insular cortex area. And what we want to do naturally, and what our brain wants to do, is to switch our attention to something more pleasurable, like ZombieTube or Facebook or whatever, whatever stuff we want. 
and as a result we feel happy, but of course temporarily. And this is basically a definition of procrastination, and I shall admit that once in my career I had a hard time and I was really struggling with this problem. I was trying to postpone a lot of my, my daily work because I had that pain in my uh, brain and I was literally spending time on particularly not useful things. But researchers found that not long after you start to work on a problem, after just a few minutes or sometimes it's even seconds, that nerve discomfort of uh, physical pain in brain literally disappears. And you are doing quite okay just focusing on the task you currently do. So let me give a small example how I'm doing that. At the time I actually prepared for this talk, I had a task about extending automation test case to production. It's not that common uh, task for you, probably as your developer, but for me as a test engineer it's quite a common task. So the first, um, the first thought when I looked at that at the ticket was um, realizing how hard it will be, how um, long it will take to finish it, and I really start to feel that unhappy, unhappy feelings about the task. And what I did instead of procrastinating, instead of uh, searching the uh, web for some interesting stuff, I was particularly interested in 3D printing at that moment, is I start a time timer for just 25 minutes. And at that time I had just only one thought, it's just 25 minutes, I, I can handle that, I can work on the task just 25 minutes and moreover what is crucial I'm promising myself a bit of reward after the timer is finished usually it's 5 till 15 minutes I'm going for a walk I'm going um, to have uh, some short snacks or coffee or whatever uh, web surf I wanted before and as a result of just starting the timer and understanding that it's 25 minutes and I will have 5 minutes of my relaxation I'm focusing on doing the task and entirely okay extending automated uh, test to production task is finished after probably some 5 or 10 pomodoros and what is crucial within this process is to focus not only on the product of the task not on the time when you will finish or the the things that that task is going to uh, to deliver basically the crucial part is to focus just on the process of doing task you're focusing on saying yourself I will just do whatever whatever I can within this task and whatever will, will happen at the end no matter if I will finish or not the task I'm just okay with it and I would like you to introduce one tiny little device. It looks like not very tiny on this screenshot. Um, this is a self-made device. Actually, it's called the Air Door. I unfortunately didn't bring it uh, here to you to look at, but I actually created this device as a side effect of uh, fighting procrastination. So I had the procrastination. I started to use a Pomodoro timer to fight it. I gain more time and I become more focused on uh, finishing the task and I started to learn uh, electronics, I was very curious about that and I decided to create my own timers that will help me avoid procrastination in the future and uh, yeah, it's actually very simple, 25 minutes timer and avoiding procrastination is quite easy a few things that I want to mention uh, that I noted after using uh, this technique for more than a year, I think. So the first crucial uh, thing is that if I'm finding myself after the, the period of 25 minutes quite okay, continue doing the task. Um, someone called it a stream of consciousness. I'm usually continue doing that task, but. As usual, it's just another 25 minutes, because after 50 minutes of sitting in front of PC, you get uh, a bit tired and you need to refresh a bit. Then, uh, in one article I read that uh, that reward that you gave to yourself, um, that 5 minutes or 15 minutes of uh, searching the web for pleasant stuff, 
is basically releasing a bit of dopamine in our brain and this technique can be uh, basically uh, basically can make us a bit happier um, also it is very crucial actually to exclude all external disturbance um, we're under pressure really of slack notification of email notification of phone calls and it really distracts the focus and the, what I did is I turned off just all notification on PC uh, my phone is all, all the time uh, muted and of course your colleague can come and ask for some question and uh, yeah, interrupt you <laughs> but the thing is that when you ask them a few times if they can wait until your Pomodoro finished they get used to your behavior and it's totally okay so far all, my, all of my colleagues know that if my Pomodoro is on and if it's not super crucial, they don't interrupt me. Last but not least is that uh, Pomodoro timer particularly works in a situation where you can control time slots. In, in, in times or in meetings like Scrum or Grooming, it's really hard to use Pomodoro and it will be a bit rude to say that uh, in the middle of uh, grooming meetings that your 25 minutes is off next 15 minutes you will have a coffee break or so. Uh, so now a bit of uh, question to you. So uh, I encourage you to ask to your neighbor, neighbor sitting to write, to, uh, write to, to you uh, one question. What is the right way to avoid procrastination? To uh, What is the right way of using Pomodoro timer to avoid procrastination? And I'm not only I encourage you to ask your, um, your neighbors, but also to uh, draw answers. Uh, please, ask a question. No one wants? What is the right way of using Pomodoro to fight procrastination? Is there a wrong way of using it? Yes. <laughs> and I will show you. Of course, it's clear. Yeah. Example is well, start a timer. No interruption and focus on process of doing task and having and promising yourself a reward. For example, five or fifteen minutes break after. Okay, the next technique uh, I want to speak about. I would like you to associate with uh, okay. Typhoon Tour, everyone remember Typhoon Tour. Uh, why I used that association? Because when you got tired Typhoon Tour, you really feel some unhappy, unhappy feelings. And to avoid that, um, you just literally start repairing the tire, and eventually you will fix it and be quite happy right in your mind. Okay, we will not do that. <laughs> um, next technique, and once more I want to create another association with bike, is imagine yourself riding quite, not quite, very hard on bike. Is it, is it hard that you can barely think about anything except muscle pain? So, imagine everyone? I hope so. So the second technique was uh, called focused and diffuse mode of thinking. And to understand this technique a bit more, I want uh, to speak a bit about um, how memory works. So there is two fundamental types of memory, working memory and long-term memory. Long-term memory, um, well, when I want to recall some test technique for test design or some word in Latvian, what I did is I dig into long-term memory. But Working memory is a type of memory that has to do with everything that you are immediately and consciously think about. And back in 1956, uh, George Miller made an experiment. So he showed to people a picture uh, with circles. And then uh, he asked those people how many circles they saw. Those pictures were shown for just a quarter of a second. So if people define if there was just seven, picture, seven circles of fewer. So what Miller suggests is that um, people work in memory capacity, that is the ability to perform mental operation at current time, is roughly limited to just seven working 
units. But newest research shows that that amount is limited to four working units. Uh, opposite to long-term memory, uh, amount of working uh, of uh, working units in long-term memory is enormous. Uh, and the scene is that with only four working memory, four working units in working memory, we have so-called an informational bottleneck. We can hold only four units, and our long-term memory hold a lot of them. And one way to manage it is to create so-called chunk, or to compress information so we can hold more complicated piece of information in our four slots of working memory. I like actually the analogies that Dr. Barbara Oakley made in one of her famous courses about learning. And imagine octopus and his four tentacles as that working memory units. And those tentacles basically is your ability to read and write information from long-term memory. And um, as Miller puts in in one of his research, a man just starts to learn a radio telegraph. Here, uh, here on uh, that and dash as just a separate sounds. Then after a while, after a bit of learning, he hear not just that dot and dash, he can able to recognize letters. Uh, still, this uh, ability is a bit updated chunk of information in the long-term memory. After a while, he is able to hear not only letters but words, and eventually he can able to recognize a whole sentence from dot and dash. And it's basically the same piece of information in long-term memory, but a bit updated, a bit chunked information, so that he can hold the complex, uh, complex connections of dot and dash in just full working memory units. So, uh, I will tell a short story. So at, um, at one period, I was uh, quite new in um, test automation, particularly in back-end test automation, and I was uh, making a test which involved one, I was thinking, quite complex data transfer object. Uh, I was trying to fix, uh, not fix, I was trying to find a solution to that complex data transfer object. Basically, I got in a bunch of exceptions when I was running a test, and I was hopeless in finding the solution to a problem starting from morning stand up until lunchtime. After I, well, this Hope, uh, hopeless, um, without any hope and without any solution. What I did is I went to Visma Physiotherapy, which is basically a um, physical activity where you do stretching and uh, other physical activity and you really cannot think about anything except your leg or your arm currently. And uh, in that moment, what is happening from memory perspective is that our brain, brain works in the background. After 30 minutes of, uh, of pain, I was very happy actually to went back to my PC and sit in front of uh, the screen and uh, went through problem once again. And uh, I googled a bit more, asked a few other colleagues about my problem, and I found quite uh, quite fast a uh, solution, and it was to use a dictionary object instead of predefined uh, class type. So what has happened here from memory perspective is that when I was trying to find a solution to complex problem, I was um, googling a lot, I was asking other people to, to help me, and all of my four working memory units were busy reading and writing information from long-term memory, updating or creating new chunks of information, but I obviously didn't find a solution. Then I went into so-called diffuse mode of thinking. Basically a mode when you relax your brain, do not think about problem or any other stuff, and concentrate really on physical activity. I found for myself that the best way is really physical activity. And brain do some stuff in the foreground. Um, some people call it as, uh, give your subconscious an assignment, so let your brain figure out some stuff while it uh, don't and have any conscious awareness of, of it. And after the period of diffuse mode, after the period of uh, letting your brain work in background, you get back to a problem and uh, you reach a bit 
different information from long-term memory, a bit uh, improved chance of information, and it can lead you toward a solution. In my case, it happens quite uh, often. Uh, of course, uh, this technique, uh, this technique called focused and diffuse mode of thinking, and it helps for finding solution to uh, problems that you are currently struggling with. Here is a photo from one testing conference I've been with, people playing here football and I found it also very, very intense in case of uh, switching your brain into diffuse mode of thinking. Basically when you play football you can hardly really think about programming or some interface, you really think about ball and how to score a goal in enemy's net or something like that. So this is a, another way of us uh, letting our brain work in the background. Another question for you re regarding focused and diffuse mode of thinking. So when you're stuck with finding a solution to some complicated problem, what are the best ways to help yourself? There is a few. Bash your head into a wall in 90 degree position. Relax and do opposite activity to what you've done while you've been focusing. Go home and take a sleep, and finally use the gym membership. So what is your uh, options? I'm not a fan of first one, I would say. <coughs> All of them. All of them. Okay, another? Shower. Shower? Super. It's not here, but again. Okay. You can pray. Pray? Yeah. Very nice. Meditation. <laughs> Sorry? Meditation. Meditation works as well. If you, of course, do meditation, not just sitting and thinking that you're doing meditation. <laughs> and you almost all right. So basically, um, what I found is uh, helpful for me when you stuck with a problem in IT particularly is to force yourself to do really physical activity and very hard physical activity. In, in that time, you cannot really force yourself to think about the data transfer object problem or whatever project with uh, programming you have and your brain is really relaxing and it, it, it works in the background it tries to do some stuff instead of you and then goes back to the problem once again you can uh, really find some uh, you know, voila in your brain yeah, the first one, fortunately, is not the right one. So why I ask you to imagine yourself riding bike really extremely hard? Because when you ride bike extremely hard, you don't think about anything except riding or except the road or except your muscle pain. And this basically forces you to go into diffuse mode of thinking, to relax your brain so it will work in the background and try to figure out some stuff instead of you. Uh, here is the next four techniques I will go, I will speak today, and uh, four of these helped me a lot with my certification challenge. Almost a year ago, I decided that I will uh, pass all three main level, advanced level of testing certificates. So far, I got only two, and these four um, techniques helped me really to prepare for a certificate, to prepare for exam, and to pass them. So first is space repetition. So, um, to, uh, research has shown that to uh, put new information in our, in our brain, to learn new information, it's crucial to repeat that information. So that narrow pattern, that chunk of information that you are trying to remember, when you're recalling it once, uh, then another one, you're basically making a stronger association between narrow patterns in your brain and basically it uh, lasts longer. Uh, here is a photo of hippocampus. Uh, hippocampus is basically part of a brain that has to do a lot with the memory. When we're trying to remember information by repeating it, what we did is, uh, what our brain uh, doing is, it transfer information through hippocampus several times and trying to create new association or find already existed one in cortex area of a brain and create uh, association with some other one. But after you're um, continuing uh, repeating information, continuing transferring the material through hippocampus, 
um, that information is learned by the cortex of the brain. And eventually, you learn that information and you can recognize it as a memory. So when you transfer information through, through time, it lasts for longer. But why space repetition? So to the right is my, uh, my personal notes for one of certificate preparation. And what I did is I decided to uh, repeat, not just to read what I, what I learned within the same day of learning after just one day, after three, five days, and after one month. In different articles I found different information about uh, this interval. Someone suggests to do it after three days, and another seven days, and another month. But what I found personally very uh, crucial is to repeat it within the same day, or even after ten minutes of uh, learning, uh, learning session. And, uh, this technique, space repetition, helped me a lot with memorization of new information. Uh, interesting enough that space repetition unconsciously, of course, helped me a lot with uh, my um, learning how to dance. Uh, it was really extremely uh, important to repeat all movements I learned at dance classes directly after classes ended. So at the next class it was extremely easier, easier to uh, remember what we learned uh, comparing to days where I, when I did not do that repetition. What I found is that uh, with space repetition it's um, profitable to do a bit of experiment. Try to repeat within the same day or within, uh, within 10 days after learning, then after one day or three days and found the patterns that much, uh, much do. I also know that there is a bunch of application for phones that uh, do that thing for you and notify you about repeating information. You can use it. Uh, here is our bicycle, the loved one, and here is a strange bicycle I know. Very interesting bottle here in the middle, and I hope inside that bottle is something very tasty, and I personally prefer to repeat some drinks that are quite tasty. It repeats through time, you know, and I want to create association for you for that space repetition with that bottle because we love to repeat through time some tasty drinks. You okay? Yes? Uh, memory pass. Another thing. Very interesting. Um, here is a photo of my hallway. Uh, I remember I was preparing to certificate and uh, I learned about the defect and experience based test technique. And in order to remember all of those techniques, what I used is I used my hallway. And how I did, I will tell you right now. So to the right, you see shelves. And on shelves, people usually classify some stuff and then put the things on, on the shelves. And what I did is I took a defect taxonomy learning technique. And defect taxonomy technique is about classifying defects. And I assigned defect taxonomy to the shelves. Below shelves, there is um, key hooks. And I think that key hooks were familiar to check marks. So what I did is I assigned checklist, checklist testing as one type of defect and experience based technique to key hooks. Uh, the bottom there is my electric scooter, which used to have some problems with electronics, so I assigned the error guessing to my electric scooter. And doors, I already told once, I think the doors opens you a possibility to explore the world, so I assigned exploratory testing as another type of defect and experience based technique to the doors themselves. And even now, after more than a year uh, of uh, flooring that and creating that association, when I'm using uh, defect and experience based technique for some test design or I want to recall some technique uh, what I did first is I imagine my hallway and uh, only after that I uh, imagine the things and what uh, stuff are associated, be, uh, associated behind them uh, you can probably think that um, uh, our bicycle that we are using for association all those sort of technique is a partly a memory palace technique and I really want it to be that so I'm trying to use a bicycle as a memory palace 
so you will learn a bit, uh, a bit easier and a bit uh, effectively, also sticking to the same Once more, bicycle, and here you see uh, bags on the on the sides of a trunk of a bicycle. And what I want to imagine is to imagine us as a tiny little creature inside that bag. And from that perspective, um, the bag itself seems to us as a quite big place, almost like a palace. And that is why I want you to create association with memory palace to a bag or bags, which we to off our bicycle. Uh, the next technique is interweaving. Uh, quite uh, interesting and straightforward technique. Basically, this technique uh, suggests that mixing a subject you are currently learning, like learning new sport, or learning how to play piano, and learning J meter, uh, here is what our brains like. It likes to make a, a shift of learning things, make a, a different uh, different learning over time, not just consequent learning a new sport or just learning a G, G meter and how this technique um, can potentially help with learning and problem solving I think that it mostly help, uh, helps with really problem solving because for example if you learn a new language and then at the work you're asked to learn a new programming language for example could be that some problem in uh, programming uh, you can find some uh, solution to problem programming within a concept from learning new Russian. And that is why it can help um, also in problem solving, but as well doing um, different stuff don't uh, get you bored. Our bike once more. Uh, interleaving, as I said, is about mixing of uh, learning, of learning subjects, of learning domain. And here is a wheel spokes. You see a wheel and a wheel spokes. And wheel spokes is really mixed between each other. They intertwine between each other. And that is why I want to create association with interleaving to a wheel spokes. This is association. Last but not least is meaningful association. And it is um, actually a very straightforward technique for um, for helping you memorize in the information better. Um, once more, how it works. We take some real object, like a door. Door opens a possibility to explore the world. And when I was learning the defect and experience-based technique, one of the type was exploratory testing. So exploring the world, exploratory testing, a bit similar stuff. And I assigned door to exploratory testing. And what is uh, interesting in this case is that Putting yourself into association can help you memorize that information better. So if you imagine yourself looking into that thing, it can help memorize information a bit better than it would be. So here is once more a bicycle, and um, here is the list of main technique I spoke today. So Pomodoro timer to fight procrastination. Focused and diffuse mode of thinking for problem solving skills. Um, then uh, spaced repetition for long term memory of uh, memorization. Memory palace, some very familiar physical location and hook some learning concepts there, like your hallway or your kitchen. Uh, interleaving for mixing studies in a variety of subjects. And it can potentially help you find solution in a domain that you don't really uh, currently think about. And meaningful association, straightforward, taking some object, create some association that for you is meaningful and associated for you. And I want right now to uh, do some recall using our bicycle. I really hope that um, we remember all of them and we can recall all of the techniques we learned today by just looking on, the, on this bicycle. So, um, do you remember the first learning technique? It was Pomodoro. To what part uh, did we assign it? For broken, the, tire. Yeah. broken tire. Function broken tire. tire. Because it's unhappy situation when we have the broken tire. And to you know, avoid it, you start fixing the tire and eventually you will fix the tire and you will be quite happy doing that. And uh, another technique is what? Repeating drinking. 
drinks. Okay, <laughs> repeating drinks, very nice. It probably was the, the best association I made. So space repetition for repeating information over time. We signed to bottle because we like to repeat tasty drinks. You know. Okay, second one. Backpack. How about ourselves? Riding bike quite hard. What mix means? Focus and like. Mix focused and diff uh, and diff mixed focus and diffuse mode of thinking. So basically, focus on the task and do some relaxation if you feel that you're really stuck with uh, uh, finding a solution. Air yeah, beloved bottle. Ah, sorry. Uh, memory palace. Why? Because inside bag it will be almost like a palace. Yeah. And memory, memory palace is about. Um, imagine, uh, imagine some very familiar physical location. Your probably your house or your kitchen or your hallway or your car, and hook to that familiar location things you want to learn. Uh, other one. Those bags. Uh, I think a few more left. Spikes. Spikes, and we uh, assign what spikes. They mix between each other, and what technique? Uh, Interleaving, yeah, for mixing uh, things we're studying. And, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the last but not least, I actually forgot to say, but uh, meaningful association I left for you to assign, uh, assign this meaningful association to whatever you want in bike. And uh, any suggestion to what part of a bike we can assign meaningful association? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Super. Um, previously, when I had a talk, um, one guy proposed to assign whole bicycle to a meaningful association. Any other pro proposals? Except Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Set Keanu Reeves. Okay, let's use this Keanu Reeves. I don't know why I did that. I, when I was just preparing for this talk, I was out of my imagination for associations. And I found that I can put someone on that uh, trend, you know, and the Keanu Reeves uh, rise in my, my head. Fortunately, it's a bit sad. But, uh, so, um, thank you very much for the attention. Here is the link and the barcode for Telegram channel where uh, you can find my presentation and you can also write any feedback or comments you want. I also will post there a Google form for your feedback. It will be anonymous. I will be very happy if you will say anything, particularly bad stuff, because I'm interested in what was bad. Thank you once more. <laughs> yep, now I think we have some time for questions. We have some time for yeah, questions? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Can I ask two, but one is just like to understand the last bit about the association yes like how what is the purpose of it like have an association to remember the whole thing i've heard here about the bicycle and stuff yes okay and this bicycle i was trying to use as a memory yeah, as technique, I but that. as i said it's hard to uh, find uh, a place that everyone will really know good and that is why i just use bicycle it's a bit strange bicycle with bottle but still so, yes. Yeah, my main question would be for the Pomodoro timer. Have you got yourself into a situation where, like, okay, you gave yourself some time, you're done, you stopped, but like, you don't want to get back to that stuff. Like, it's still <laughs> unpleasant. And it is a trick. Mm -hmm. You, if you will start, you. For, from my experience, whatever unpleasant that situation is, after a few minutes you start doing that, you're really feeling okay doing that. And after it's finished, you you can forget about everything, you can go and do your, your stuff for whatever time. But another time you will get back to the situation, you once more force yourself just you're basically saving willpower, you're just forcing yourself for a first minute or for 30 seconds to, to really focus on the task and then you continue doing, your brain is doing totally okay for example today after lunchtime, you know after lunchtime or after fri on Fridays it's really hard to 
uh, force yourself doing some really good, uh, really good work. And uh, after lunchtime, I found this is the most hardest time when you, when you really all your blood going to stomach. You don't want to start anything. You don't. You really want to sleep. And this technique helped me. Um, very much. And uh, today, actually, after lunch, I uh, I'm preparing for another talk about performance testing. And it's not really that unpleasant um, unpleasant as just sit in front of PC and type in a lot of uh, letters and type in a lot of thoughts. So, 25 minutes, a few minutes, you will um, have that unhappy unhappy thoughts, that physical pain, probably sometimes. But it will disappear. From your experience, this works all the time, right? For me, yes. Okay. Any other questions? Please. So you mentioned SRS technique, uh, space repetition, uh, and uh, there's uh, there was like an interval, uh, repeat the same day, repeat after uh, after one day, after three five days, and then after one month. Uh, does that involve like one single repetition, or does that involve like multiple repetitions for you? Usually, or it doesn't depend. What I did is that uh, when I decided to repeat once more, I used Pomodoro. I press 25 minutes and I'm repeating for 25 minutes, nice. and that's it. But of course, if here is my notes, yeah, you see it's quite a big actual notebook. It's 96 pages, and when you're going to the end to repeat everything, it will take you probably half a day. So, but still, if you will repeat um, all information. Uh, strongly, you will get to the point that uh, from first page to page 50, you repeated it probably 20 times and you do not need to revisit it because it was months ago and you already know it. It works like that, at least for me. Thank you for the question. Yes? From your experience, how do you combine Pomodoro timer technique with uh, diffused and focused thinking? Because in my book, Watching YouTube videos and playing football is the same kind of procrastination. One is just physical, another one is just mental procrastination. <laughs> so do you usually go to physiotherapy for five minutes during Commodore procrastination time, or you spend your Commodore time for procrastinating, which is kind of like always procrastinating? <laughs> yep, thanks for the question. Um, well, if it's physiotherapy, of course, it's 30 minutes. You know, this session uh, lasts for 30 minutes. But if I want to combine it with diffuse mode of thinking, I don't think 5 minutes will be enough. I don't think even 25 minutes will be enough. Most probably 30 minutes plus will be enough, but still it depends. If you are focusing very hardly and then after 15 seconds you're on a bike and going home very fast and you're home 20 kilometers from your office, it will be entirely enough for you to go into diffuse mode of thinking. But of course if you just get a cup of coffee and uh, um, by walking to a coffee machine you will still think about the problem from work. How do you know if you are just willing to procrastinate or you're willing to have a fast diffused uh, thing? Sorry, I didn't get it. In uh, how do you know? How do you like, think? Uh, do you need to procrastinate right now or do you need to have a diffused thinking? Maybe I am always thinking and, that I need to... Yeah, I understand. Uh, sense. Well, for diffuse mode of thinking, as I said, it is profitable when you're stuck with a solution or with a, with a problem, when you cannot find a solution. Usually, it, don't, it didn't happen quite often. Mm, more, what is more often happens is that you really need to do work that you know how to do, and you just need to do that. But, of course, when you're stuck with some problem, with some, some new stuff, then you can uh, use diffuse and uh, focus mode of thinking to talk how to. But for uh, just doing the work, procrastination works uh, better. Thank you for the question. Yes. Uh, do you use memory cards or stuff? Yes, I used it for. Uh, well, as I said. Yeah, yeah, I know. But uh, do, do you use like your flat for it all, all, all the time or? You have some uh, for me it's a flat, mm -hmm. then um, as I'm al almost three years in Visma, I already very well know office itself and all meetings room and the names and also colleagues sitting in front of me, so sometimes for some things I even assign mm -hmm. some colleagues sitting in front or some meetings room, but it also depends on you what physical location you know the best and you can use for. Actually my question is about that there are some limits, like if you use your flat, 
there are kitchen to rooms, maybe a, a hallway. Mm -hmm. There are like hundreds, thousands of ideas that you want to remember. And uh, how do you find a place for each of that like concepts? Well, yeah, it's tricky when you're starting to extend in this new repos to some really enormous amount. For, um, well, what I found is that I didn't go into that, that edges of literally thinking about a lot of things, but I know that some of my colleagues, they did use uh, uh, the maps from Counter-Strike, which is basically enormous, <laughs> and they put a lot of stuff into that maps. And Basically, you can really remember well some from the computer game from your childhood that you know quite quite good, like Mario or whatever. <laughs> Here is another memo apparel that you can uh, can use. Sorry. Thank you for the question. I can add to this. Actually, if you want to remember some, so if you are remembering some uh, information that is related to, like elements that relate to each other, for example, testing related stuff and you have assigned it to one, one place, then if, if, and you can do this, then if you're uh, trying to rem remember something uh, dance related, you can use the same place, like, you, uh, hopefully, you will not mix mix up these elements. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. That's like map several ideas to one Yes, place. several, like, uh, you know, la layers or whatever. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you for your readings. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, isn't this uh, memory palace technique just some kind of over engineering? I mean, why not just to draw a picture and put memory map which is uh, explicit already? So, yeah. Well, you can use that, but for me, how it's beneficial is that I, my brain already knows that location and already know how that um, view it looks like, and what I only need to do is that to assign things there. And when I want to recall the things, I don't need to recall the things. I recall what I already know. And only after I'm digging into things I associated, and it's, of course, meaningful association for me. For example, shelves is about classifying some things, so classifying defects, defect taxonomy. That is why it works for that. So it's a slight direct reference to, to yeah. some memory object. Yeah, I forgot to say that meaningful association, I think that meaningful association and it's kind of techniques that used quite hardly in conjunction with memory power. So without some meaningful association, it would be hard, of course, to put uh, only stuff in the memory. The Thank you for a question. Yeah, yes. The other benefit, I guess, am I right, like, would be that if you know there's a list of things about that topic and you have that memory with that palace, you see like how many things are there and you might not forget something like the bicycle you you look at the bottle and like was there something with the bottle like am i not forgetting it right like, so it's kind of backwards, backwards feedback yeah. thanks for any any other questions i think let's do it now that we finish okay. and if you have questions come directly to Igor. we will have i think at least 15 minute break so you have time so thank you Yes. Uh, this is for bicycle. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you once more. Hope it will help you.